Hello guys, Michael here from youtube.com slash the revived one and twitter.com slash blue42richman, both of which I suggest subscribing and following respectively. Today I'm going to show you an application called Handbrake, and in this video I'm going to show you, should I just repeat myself? In this video I'm going to show you how to use Handbrake as the ultimate DVD ripper. Of course, you want to own the content because otherwise that's stealing, and you don't want to be a thief, do you? Um, but I'm going to show you how to rip movies that you own to your computer. Now, you can get this application, like I said, it's called Handbrake at handbrake.fr, and you can download it for OS X, both Intel and PowerPC varieties, as well as Windows, Linux, and a 64-bit version of Linux, which is really, really cool. And again, handbrake.fr, this is a free download, and there's definitely, again, if it's free, there's no reason not to own it. So I'm just gonna put my disk in, and it will auto play, I believe, in DVD player, so I'll get ready to kill that as soon as it comes up. With a command Q if you want the keyboard shortcut for Mac OS X. There we go. I like the image here. And I'm just going to select the DVD, press open. Now, what it's going to do is going to start scanning the source, so in this case, the DVD. And the way the movie gets put on is there are several different titles. And or what that's what Handbrake calls it, and basically, that's just different separate media files that have been put onto the DVD. So generally, there's going to be one that's substantially longer than the others. That's what Handbrake will automatically choose, and that's because that's most likely the actual movie file. But if you have special features uh, that you may have, or m different files that are the same length or close, and there's not really one that big, you may have to change that yourself. Or if you want to get a particular special feature or whatever off the disc, you'll have to change the title, which you can do right here, of course. We're just Handbrake does a good job. I don't think I've ever personally had an issue with it not selecting the movie file that I wanted, but you just make sure it's the big one. This in this case, hour twenty three minutes forty three seconds. And then, if you don't want the whole thing, you just want a, a different a s certain chapters of it. You can, of course, change the chapters, and it'll change the duration as well. And it'll only bring that content onto your Mac, PC, or Linux environment. Now, up here, source. That's what automatically what we automatically chose. It'll just choose what media file you want, where your DVD is, in essence. And then you have a queue here, and uh, we'll just remove that from the queue, but. Basically, what a, what the queue is, it allows you to have multiple projects, and then you can run them, and it'll do it in sync. Once one's done, it'll get to the next one, it'll get to the next one, and it'll bring all your content in. For me on my MacBook Pro, that's not really practical because it has one DVD drive. But if you're on a PC, a custom build that has you know a lot of DVD drives, or a Linux machine, or even a Mac that has multiple DVD drives, that can be very useful. Now, talking about that. There are some stability issues that I've had with it. Sometimes it, it's just going to crash. I've had it where it crashed at 5%, I've had it 50%, 90%. Sometimes it just randomly crashes. Other times I've ripped three DVDs of mine onto my hard drive and I had nothing. So sometimes there's some stability issues. So that's just something to keep in mind if you need the file, if you're going on a trip. And that again, that's generally how I use it. I own the DVDs and sometimes I just don't want to risk breaking it or I don't have the space to bring three cases, three DVD cases, so I'll just put it onto my hard drive. And in the end in itself, there could be some legality issues with that. I personally feel with the with Fair Act that you can do this, the fair you have fair usage. You know, you own the DVD, why can't you watch it on your computer when you want it? Other people say you can't do that. So, definitely don't do this with movies you know that you get from Netflix or Blockbuster if they're still around or the library or whatever because that's not fair use that's that's stealing so just something to keep in mind with technology there's always a lot of concerns with what's crossing the line and what's acceptable so back in the application and uh, again so if you had a lot you could rip that in, into your queue and it would be quite nice and again how I use this is if I need to go on a trip or whatever I have the files right on my hard drive. So now over here, this is where you're going to be doing most of your work. You can choose what you want to convert the DVD to. That's a, that's the second video I'm going to be doing, another handbrake video. Uh, but So we're not we're just going to leave that at normal for now. Then you can change the format if you want MP4, MKV, AVI, and OGM. You can also do larger file size. 
or web optimized or iPod fifth generation support. Under the video tab down here, you can change the codec and the frame rate, and you can also choose grayscale encoding or two pass encoding and turbo the first pass. That's what I like to use two pass encoding, you get higher quality, and turbo the first because if you're doing two, uh, it's just a little bit too long if you do two full passes. This takes about an hour. Uh, depending on the DVD and the power of your machine. Again, I just like to leave most of these settings alone. Handbrake does a great job, again, selecting the title and the, the different settings in the most advantageous fashion, if you will. So you can change these if you want, and quality is where you're going to do most of your changing. Now, I like again, I like to leave it like this, but sometimes I'll bump up the bitrate if I want a little bit extra quality or you can change the constant quality so it's different so the it's just different ways to import and you can also target size so if you know that you need to make this fit on a particular medium so if you want it to fit on a gig flash drive make it less than a gig if you want it to fit on a CD make it less than 700 megabytes because you know sometimes it just depends on your usage of this so changing the target size or changing the bitrate is really all that I ever use and change in this. Um, now down here you have your picture settings and for some reason this particular movie is showing me some issues here. Again that's just something sometimes it's it's funky but uh, just make sure your DVD is clean and you shouldn't have any issues. And then you can choose to crop which is really interesting. You can import it cropped if you want to crop something out. You can go ahead and do that. You can also change the size up here and do some de-interlacing which is kind of cool that you can do that in here. Again, I don't really use any of that. I like to just, I don't, I don't like to mess with that. Get the most quality I can out of a DVD, so I like to leave it. Now back up here, you can look at audio and subtitles. Again, leave it the same. Chapters, if you want to create the chapter markers or not, and advanced. Again, I don't really touch any of that stuff. That I just don't need that. So anyway, once you're done, you just press start it'll rip and it'll save the file to your, the directory you chose here again you can name it whatever you want it doesn't really matter again this takes maybe an hour or two depending on the quality that you're using and the power of your machine my recommendation is to keep all the settings the same and just to use two pass encoding turbo the first pass that's the best way that I've found to use it it gives you the best quality I think uh, for what you're doing so again then you'll just press start and it'll run and once it's done, it'll stop. I believe it makes a sound, but I don't think that matters to most people. So there's the free application Handbrake. Again, you can find more information at handbrake.fr. This is a free app for all platforms, Mac OS X, Linux, and Windows. And please don't say Mac OS X. I don't like that. Um, but if you own any computer, I suggest using this because it allows you to maximize the content that you already rightfully purchased. So I don't see a problem with doing it. Again, if you want to contact me, the revived one at gmail.com. You can send all your questions. Please don't message me via YouTube. It's very annoying for me to go through that medium to contact you to reply. Um, and again, follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash blue42richman for exclusive content and interesting news that I post there periodically. And subscribe if you haven't already. Also, show some kindness. Leave a nice comment if you can. I don't really like the negative comments, particularly the ones that criticize me for no reason as some squirrely worm hides behind his computer trashing me even though I'm the one that has over 1100 subscribers helping people every day answering questions and that's just a loser so not much to say about that but leave a nice comment rate it whatever fair rating you think favorite it if you'd like uh, just use proper etiquette and remember I'm putting myself out there to help you so there's not really a reason for you to be a douche to me and that was probably the worst word I've ever said on here, but sometimes it angers me, some of the comments that are left. Not by you guys, my loyal subscribers, but by some other nonsense. <laughs> anyway, getting off topic here, again, handbrake. Thanks for watching, take care, have a nice day, and enjoy your content.